Welcome back to the last episode of Cracking the CSWE. In this video, we're going to be looking at some more complex sheet metal things, such as taking parts with different file types, such as IGES, and turning them into sheet metal parts inside of SOLIDWORKS. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And with that out of the way, let's just get into the last episode of Cracking the CSWE. The part that I've linked in the description is not a SOLIDWORKS part, but rather is an IGES file. An IGES or IGS file, standing for the Initial Graphics Exchange Specification, is a file that every CAD software should be able to open as it is vector neutral. This means that it uses vectors to define part geometry and not a feature tree like SOLIDWORKS does. This means that the part we have here may have come from another CAD package. Our job is to turn it into a sheet metal part, flatten the sheet metal part, and then add some extra extruded cuts to the part where we want. Of course, in the CSWE exam, it'll tell you where it wants the cuts. Before we even convert it into sheet metal, we're going to need to first import it correctly. We can click the part in our folder and then go to the options. Depending on your SOLIDWORKS version, this might look a little bit different, but the idea is still the same. We're going to turn off 3D interconnect and then make sure the file tries to form solids and merge them together. If you have any issues creating the sheet metal part, the issue is almost certainly a setting in the import. So look through your settings and see if any weird options are selected for your import body, such as the body being turned into a surface and not a solid body. To convert the part into a sheet metal part, we can use the convert to sheet metal button under the sheet metal tab. First, we're going to want to select the top face here as our fixed face. This is basically the base flange of our sheet metal part. Then if the thickness and bend radius values do not autofill in these boxes, we could use our measure tool to get the values and input them. Of course, thickness would be the thickness from two faces to another, and then the bend radius would be the internal bend radius of a bend. Then for the bend edges, we can select the collect all bends button, which should recognize all the bends in our part. The corner defaults should also automatically adjust, so don't worry about that selection box either. Now, if we complete our feature, we can see our part is now a sheet metal part as we can flatten the part, and it has the sheet metal folders in the feature tree. If we had to measure something about the part when it's flattened, we can do it now. Let's unflatten the part so we can manually unfold it, so that we can add in a cut to the part and then refold it so that the cut goes to the final sheet metal part. We can select the unfold button, select our top face as the fixed face, collect all the bends, and then the part is unfolded. Pretty simple. Unlike the flatten command, the unfold makes this the real geometry of the part which we can interact with. We can then add in our cut. It will be a slot across one of the bends. Make sure in the property manager of the extruded cut to link the thickness of the cut to the sheet metal part by selecting the link to thickness checkbox. Then to fold the part back up, we can use the fold button using the same three steps as in the unfold in. Then we could check the mass properties if we had to add a material or measure something. Most of the issues you're going to have are going to be in the import of the part geometry. So if you're having any issues, be sure to check that, especially during an exam situation. If you have any questions about the part in this video, leave a comment and I'll respond as quickly as possible because sheet metal can be a little bit confusing because I haven't completed the CSWPA sheet metal prep course. Thank you so much for watching the Cracking the CSWE series. At this point, you have all the knowledge you need to take and pass the CSWE exam. And I wish you the best of luck. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave a comment or even email me. I'm willing to help anytime. 